Good morning, friends. In this session, let me explain the concept of initial tension in the belt. So, which is generally designated with uh, T naught. As we have already seen different types of uh, other tensions in the belt, like uh, tension on tight side, tension on slack side, and centrifugal tension. Okay. Then the other type of tension, initial tension in the belt, it also having its own importance in the uh, kinematics and design of uh, well drives, right? So that's why you need to take it, take this also into the consideration, okay? When you design a bell drive, right? When a belt is wound around the two ends of the belt or joined together, so that the belt forms like a loop, right? Then when the driving pulley rotates, then the belt is carried away, driven pulley, and driven shaft also subjected to the rotation. Okay, the cause of this motion transmission is the frictional grip between the belt and the pulley surface, the inner surface of the belt and the outer surface of the pulley. If this frictional grip is not effective, if the frictional grip is not uh, uh, sufficient, in carrying out the pulley, then the slippage may occur. The belt may slip from in its position, then obviously there is no power transmission or the motion transmission at all, right? So the frictional grip between the pulley and the belt surface is the cause of motion in the belt rise. Okay, so to increase this frictional grip, to increase this frictional grip, the belt is tightened. The belt is tightened, right? At this stage, even if the pulleys are stationary or the belt is stationary, the belt is subjected to some amount of tension due to the tightening, right? The tension developed in the belt due to its uh, tightening at the initial stage is called initial tension in the belt. Right, and it is designated with T naught. Right, so that's how the initial tension in the belt can be defined. So, once again, the initial tension in the belt is defined as the tension developed in the belt due to its tightening, due to its tightening to increase the frictional grip. Right, so now when the driver or the driving pulley starts its movement then it pulls the belt it pulls the belt from the driven pulley and it delivers to the other side to the driven pulley so that means the driving pulley pulls the belt from the driven that side is called a tight side and it delivers to the other side right and that side, delivery side is called slack side. So here you need to remember pulling side and delivery side. Pulling and delivery side. Okay, so pulling side is called tight side. This we already discussed and the delivery side is called slack side. Delivery slide is called slack side. Okay, so as we have already discussed, there is some amount of, uh, there exists some amount of initial tension in the belt, that is nothing but initial tension T naught, and this initial tension is increased on tight side because of its extra pulling force, right? So T naught is increased to T1, T naught is increased to T1, then T1 is the tension on tight side and T0 is decreased. T0 is decreased to 
some other value that is a tension on slack side okay so the initial tension is increased here and the initial tension is decreased here right so on the tight side the initial tension is increased and finally the value is equal to t not t1 and on the delivery side or slack side the initial tension value is slightly decreased and it uh, reaches to the value t2 okay so due to the rotation or due to its movement the initial tension value is altered right at one side this value is slightly increased and uh, on the other side this value is slightly decreased okay so the amount of increase in the tension on tight side and the amount of decrease of tension on the tight side right causes corresponding changes in the belt dimensions causes corresponding changes in the belt dimensions this dimensions change is nothing but change of its length change of its length we will see now how this uh, dimensional change takes place in the belts let uh, t1 and t2 t1 comma t2 are tensions on tensions on tight and slack sides respectively right anyway t not is tension on tight side sorry tension tension initially in the belt so that is called initial tension okay then the increase in the belt tension increase in the belt tension on tight side is equal to what is the initial tension value here t not right and finally it is increased to t1 what is the increase in the tension final value minus initial value t1 minus t not t1 minus t not similarly as i said the corresponding decrease takes place in the tension value on slack side so the decrease in the belt tension on slack side is equal to what is the initial tension value initial tension is t not final tension is t2 t2 is less than t not t2 is less than t not so t not minus t2 this is the corresponding decrease value okay so this increase and decrease in the belt tension causes the corresponding dimensional change so the belt is subjected to what type of force here it is subjected to tensile force on uh, tight side and it is subjected to compressive force on slack side so that means simply the belt is subjected to axial forces or the normal forces obviously the corresponding change in the dimension is nothing but either elongation or contraction either elongation or contraction so the tight side is subjected to tight side is subjected to tension okay slack side is subjected to elongation sorry compression so when the member is subjected to tensile forces then obviously what is the type of uh, deformation takes place elongation right it is subjected to elongation right and when the member is subjected to compression what is the corresponding deformation the belt is subjected to contraction 
the belt is subjected to contraction okay so let alpha be the alpha be the coefficient of linear expansion coefficient of linear expansion coefficient of linear expansion per unit force per unit force right therefore therefore the tight side is subjected to elongation is it right how much it is subject how much elongation takes place on the tight side so this is the force on tight side this force into coefficient of linear expansion you will get the corresponding elongation value right similarly the co contraction value or decrease in the length on the slack side is equal to coefficient of linear expansion into the force what is the force on the slack side decrease in the tension right so t not minus t2 okay but the length of the belt must be constant the length of the belt must be constant that means the elongation on tight side should be equal to the contraction on slack side then only the belt length remains same okay so therefore the elongation of belt on tight side is equal to is equal to alpha into what is the force on the tight side increase in the force is t1 minus t0 similarly contraction contraction of the belt on slack side it is equal to what is the decrease in the force here t not minus t2 t not minus t2 okay right now since the length of the belt is remains constant then there should not be any change in the length of the belt during its application or during its functioning since the length of the belt belt should be remains same right therefore alpha into t1 minus t0 is equal to alpha into t0 minus t2 right then alpha alpha gets cancelled then you can write the equation for t not t not is equal to t not t not t not plus t not right two t not T one plus T two by two, right? T not is equal to T one plus T two by two. Okay, so this is the initial tension in the belt, right? But here the centrifugal tension is not taken into account, right? If T C also taken into account, then 
T naught is modified as T naught is equal to so T C. What is the tension on to right side? T T one. T T one plus T T two tension on slag side by two. What is T T one? T one plus T C. Similarly, T two plus T C. That means T one plus T two divided by two T C by two. Then this will become the initial tension the belt when the centrifugal tension is taken into account. If the centrifugal tension is not taken into account, then the mean of the tensions on tight and slack sides will be considered as the initial tension in the belt. Okay, right. So that's how you can find out the initial tension, like uh, your other tensions, right? Tension on tight side, tension on slack side, and centrifugal tension. And here the initial tension is simply expressed in terms of tension on tight, tension on slack side, and centrifugal tension. Okay. So we have other formula for uh, this centrifugal tension that is CG bar formula, right? CG bar formula for the initial tension. That is a relation square root of T1 plus square root of T2 is equal to two. Square root of T naught. Two square root of T naught. This is also another relation uh, between the centrifugal tension and the tension on tight and slack sides, respectively. Okay, is it clear? I hope uh, you understood this. Right. Thank you.